Hi, Christina. Nice to see you again. How are you doing? I am good. How about you? Good, thank you. I'm good. I appreciate you talking to me about this. It's um, been kind of fun to take this journey with you guys, as I would imagine it is for you to take this journey with the character. And it's quite rare to get a continuing film series that's just about a couple and their relationship and, you know, isn't involving saving the world or beating vampires or surviving an apocalypse. So what have you most enjoyed about the opportunity to do these films, to play this character and to just explore their lives? That's such a good question. It's well identified that, you know, we feel like this romance is done so often, but to do a franchise in the nature that we have, like you say, without those extra added layers, is, is it doesn't come around too to what we, I guess we feel like it does, but it doesn't in, in its simplicity. And I think part of what makes it so special and that I've enjoyed so much about it is we're so, I mean, it starts with Anna, it's so brave to show everything and show the sex scenes and the arguments and the family aspects and the darker sides of everything. And I think that realistic, you know, darker nature and, and, and willingness to show every side of it is, is what compels people and what, what compelled me and what, what one of the things I love most about it. Is there anything that's surprised you about, t- you know, telling the story as an actor? Were there things that unexpected things in taking this journey from an acting standpoint? Yeah, I mean, what's been nice for me is because I deliberately didn't read the books because I know so much is going to change and so much from the books might not make it to the films and stuff. The, for me, just like the audience, kind of gradually learning like what's happening as I get each script. And, and um, I mean, there's so many twists and turns and surprises in this. And they are all like plausible and not like, like you say, like out there and far-fetched and unrelatable, like saving the world. They're things like, you know, family aspects and, you, you know, your dad having crutches that he needs to deal with and yourself and mental health issues and trauma, past friendships coming out of college. And they're all relatable things but we're not we're not glorifying them and, and showing them in a perfect light we're, we're you know showing the, the realistic nature of sometimes it, it not being perfect yeah it's so interesting because when you look at these movies it's like the first one was trouble with their exes and then the second one was like trouble with their mothers and now it's trouble with their fathers and it's not like they're not trying to survive zombies and it's just it's interesting how you know you can really follow these two through such just normal issues i feel like norm, normal normal life when it's not going great is, is dramatic great entertainment and sometimes we forget that you know that there is there's so much entertainment in the in the more as you say relatable seemingly seemingly kind of normal things you lost me for a bit there i'm back now um <laughs> but yeah yeah uh i do i do love that, that that we get a chance to do that and i think anna's it starts with anna and i think she kind of set those those things up so well it's wild that you shot this third film in Bulgaria, the third and fourth film, you shot this, you know, in, in a very foreign country during a pandemic. What was that like? How different was the experience having to shoot with all of these new safety protocols? Was there ever anything like, was it just bizarre? Yeah. I mean, first of all, we're so lucky that we got a chance to do it. We're so lucky that the fans, you know, were so supportive of, of the, franchise that we even had the opportunity to, to to go and do it in the middle of a pandemic and shoot two back to back and yet climate wise going from Atlanta summertime to shooting in Bulgaria winter was definitely a jump I mean we had to like drink freezing cold water before certain takes outside so that our breath wasn't as visible because it was so cold and yeah scenes coming out of a hot tub at zero degrees but trying to be slick and sexy and act like you're not shivering um is yeah, it comes with its comes with its challenges. But um, the Bulgarian crew were so hard work working and and lovely. And you know the new cast members who stepped in did great great things with their roles. And uh, yeah, it was it was surpri- It was definitely difficult. It was definitely you know hard work. But um, I'm so happy with the final product, and that's kind of all that matters when you when you look back. So sounds like there would also be a very entertaining blooper reel involved with this movie then. <laughs> You know what? There would be, there would be if the cameras like came like you know offset and between between. T- I feel like on set because of the nature of the film was a bit more dramatic, so we don't have like actual bloopers. But yeah, we did have a we did have a lot of fun like you know in the hotel on the twenty fourth floor. We all did. We were just like crazy kids locked up for like three months, and obviously you can imagine us doing, yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of fun, stupid stuff. 
You've had different directors for each of, of the first three films. What was that like to have the different visions and perspectives on these characters while you guys are sort of the constant throughout? I have to say the reason it worked was because every director was so respectful of our approach and therefore that linear consistency in how we play the characters was never, you know, no one ever tried to get us to budge on that front. But the style of the films changed and I think that that is, rel- is quite welcomed in a, in a series of books where there are seven books. I love the fact that we've had different directors who have allowed to put their own stamp on it and therefore there's going to be different fans who say, I love the second and it's so much better than the first or the third and the fourth or I love the three and four, but not so much as, or I love the first one. And I feel like it's almost that nice to, to think that, that each and every fan gets a little pocket of something, whether they preferred Shane or Chance as Landon or whether they prefer Castillo, you know, whoever it may be, everyone gets their own kind of, you know, um, their, own, their own opinion. And there's a, there's a variety of themes and stuff to, to choose from. Was it ever weird to act opposite a, a different actor playing the same character in some of these movies? Was it ever kind of strange to have those changes going on? Well, I can imagine it being off-putting for the audience to adapt to it. Because I've watched things where people get recast and it's taken me a minute to adapt to like who, you know, who the new person is. But since you're asking specifically how it is for me, Joe answered this question in a really smart way that I completely agree with, which is you do a lot of scenes where the camera has to be where the person is and therefore the person can't be there and they'll be reading the lines off screen or they might not be able to be around. They might be having to do something else. So you have the director or an AD or someone reading the lines and you're staring at the corner of the camera and already you're so detached from reacting with the other actor that when another actor comes in to replace them, you're like, well, at least it's a human being with a face and eyes and stuff. So you can still kind of apply the same dynamic in the relationship despite the role being changed, but I completely accept how for the audience it's probably a bit more difficult. What was it like to finish the last scene on the last day, knowing that you'd be saying goodbye to these characters? Have you officially said goodbye to him yet, or does it not feel like you're there yet since the fourth movie still won't be out for a bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? We might need to do a random pickup or reshoot and stuff. So I definitely haven't said goodbye, goodbye to him. It's not, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's far from done yet. But it was that bittersweet, and it does feel like, you know, it does feel like something we've got, we've got somewhere. Um, and yeah, I think just bittersweet. I felt so proud and accomplished and pr- proud of everyone. And we just, you know, three months with all the same people is like, it's, it's, it's happy. It's a happy, positive feeling of having completed what you meant to do and, you know, got to the end final destination. But of course it's sad to, to, to have to finish and go home. So bittersweet is a, is a good word to describe it. How did your first day on the first film compare to your last day on the last film? Do you feel like a very different person and actor since you started this whole process? 100%. I feel like you would naturally grow in the ages that I've, you know, the age I started to now, although it's only two to three years, it, 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 I feel like I've changed massively. I feel like I've had so many incredible life experiences as well, not just filming the movie, but promoting it and going traveling around talking to fans and talking to people like yourself. And, and um, I feel like I have learned so much. I can't almost, I almost can't even highlight one thing, but definitely very different to how I felt on the first day to wrap it on the last day, yeah. Do you feel like you and, and Josephine have been on the same page when it comes to your characters and their relationships and their feelings and reactions and when you guys think they're justified or when they're not? Do you tend to feel like you come at it from the same place or do you ever have disagreements about how they're behaving? Yeah, I feel like no, that's a great question. And, and like generally, I feel like we are very much in the same boat and have the same thoughts. And when we don't, I feel like it's only ever beneficial because it will be like, why would I act like that? And be like, well, because I would act like this and surely you'd... And we'll bounce off each other to a point where my character's my character and her character's her character. So she can do whatever... Do you know what I mean? We're not the direct... We don't have any say on what other, each other is going to do. But I feel like because we've been with each other, for, you know, on the journey with each other's characters, we're almost like the best people to ask advice of. So as much as we won't tell each other what to do, whenever we do disagree, it's really useful to have someone else's opinion who's been there from the start and you know has a has a, a good sense of what's right and wrong for your character what is your favorite moment between the two of them in in this third film uh, because we shot three and four back to back i confused some scenes because it was all shot out of order as well yeah. with three and four um 
But I think there's one, I think the argument where, um, I think it's where she says, uh, you, I want, you know, uh, I'll be there. I'm talking about Seattle, I'll be there. And he says, well, that's not enough. Is that, I think that happens in the kitchen and, and they've just like woken up. It might be a different thing I'm confusing it with, but there's one in the kitchen where it just feels like a very, very like natural argument that isn't over the top and isn't like shouting at each other and isn't going to end in plates crashing and, and people walking out. But just a very kind of more tame, I don't know. Um, I think I am confusing it with a different scene, but one of the more, dem- you know, yeah. I guess like relatable arguments that isn't at a hundred percent was nice to see because it's not it's not like it's perfect or it's a crazy argument. Sometimes you do have bits in the middle, and it's nice to show them. Sometimes Harden gets some shocking news at the end of this film, so he's not really left in the best place. What would you say to tease the fourth film for fans, for for fans that like, you know, are sitting and screaming at their screens when they're watching the end of this movie? What would you say to like hold them over, give them hope for the fourth movie? Do you know what? I I feel like, I feel like, I almost feel like, this is cheeky to say, but I almost feel like Cliffhanger alone does it. I'd almost want to like, if they were like, oh, what, and came to me for an answer, I'd want to just be like, you know, I feel, like, I feel like saying nothing is enough to is enough to get them back after that cliffhanger. So I almost wouldn't want to tease, but you know, come on, you've got to want to find you. You have to want to find out after after that. So yeah, um, just just stick with him. If if Harding can keep trying to be a better person, you, that like, and you know, and he's still sticking at it, then then you guys can stick at it for one more film and see if he makes it there. What has it been to get to have those kind of cliffhangers? Because that's also something you don't get in movies very often because you never know if you're going to get to finish telling the story. So people tend to not want to just leave it in such a moment like that. Is it fun to get to be able to play with the audience in that way, knowing that they will get to come back? I'm real. I'm, I'm realizing it's quite like sadistic how much I enjoy like watching the fans <laughs> go through that. Like, no, what's going to happen? Or when they're watching the trailer and they can't wait to watch it, like, that excitement is just like, yeah, you, you can't put a price on, 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 on that kind of, especially like watching that, that is, is kind of what I, yeah, what, what I do it for. So I'm, I, I love that the cliffhangers have become like a kind of iconic, notorious aspect of the After franchise. Uh, yeah, I love it. How do you pick the next project after this? Because it seems like when you finish something like this, where you go next is important because people are going to see you as this character. So what are you looking for as far as, you know, finding something completely different? Yeah. I mean, that you've, that's exactly it. I would love to, I would love to just explore all the other, you know, styles and types of roles and genres of films. Uh, I definitely want to do some like darker crime stuff, uh, some, some thrillers, some, you know, uh, cat and mouse twists and turns, yeah, uh, a psychological thriller um, or like a script with a lot of fans to keep you on the edge of your seat is the kind of the kind of stuff I'm going to be going for. But I would love to just keep an open mind and continue to do like a variety of stuff. I want to keep testing myself and try and do a little bit of everything. Are you a comedy person? Do you feel does comedy scare you? Do you feel like you would take no, no, comedy? No, in the in the in the right the right comedy. There are some comedic elements in a film I did called The Loneliest Boy in the World that that I know I can't talk about too much because I still haven't seen like a press release, but I can't wait till I can start talking about it. <laughs> that has some comedic moments in, so yeah. Um no, that doesn't scare me in the right in the right the right project. I'd love to. Well, I appreciate you talking about this. It has been so fun to watch this journey and to talk to you about it. I appreciate it. Likewise, Christine. Always a pleasure. Lovely to see you again, and thank you for the question.